Uh, let's talk about Notre Dame and this past year's game. You take a number one ranking and a 27 game winning streak into South Bend for one of the most anticipated matchups in the rivalry in, uh, in many years. It's a perfect autumn day. Sky is blue, the grass is green, and, and tall, and very high. And very high. <laughs> the Irish storm out of the locker room in those green jerseys. The place is absolutely electric. Can you share some of your memories of that game with us? Yeah, it was, it was a great buildup to a great college matchup. And uh, the day before the game, when we went to the stadium, we, we have a tradition that we go and see the locker room and go on the practice on the field and throw the ball around a little bit and, and uh, then get out of there so we feel familiar with the setting. And uh, when the buses were driving, you know, we're in South Bend and we get on the campus, you could, there was just people everywhere. It was fl the, the campus was flooded, which is historic for them. Standard, everybody, you know, walks the campus and the grotto and all of that. And uh, as we came around the, the, the stadium and the buses pulled up, there was thousands of people there, you know, it, kids mostly, mostly young people, and they were just rabid, you know. They were so jacked up. And this was the night before the big rally and all the kind of stuff that, you know, that builds up. They to filled that the stadium in the rally. Yeah, and the, uh, um, it was the day of the, that rally. And, and uh, as we got off the bus, you know, we, we, single file, we had to serpentine our way through the crowd, you know, and they're kind of jabbing at us. It was just, and our guys loved it. You know, they loved it because it was just, you could feel the energy. We get in the locker room, we walk right into the locker room, and they're pounding on the lockers, and they're fired up because they could feel it. You know, it was on. It was on. The game was on, you know. And uh, so the buildup was beautiful to the night before, and coming to the, the stadium the next day, uh, or that night at the hotel, just so that, you know, at the rally, okay, they had the grass growing tall and all that kind of stuff. They'd done everything they could. They had brought back Joe Montana. I promised our players he wouldn't play in the game. <laughs> <laughs> they, they brought back Lou Holtz, the historic coach that they had had, the only old guy that was still available that they could bring in a coach there <laughs> that would come. And he talked at the rally. They went and got the guy who starred in the movie Jesus, the, the guy that the, right. the lead, played the lead. Right. He came up there and did one of these, you know, in front of the rally. <laughs> they went to Jesus to get this thing organized and fired up. <laughs> they came out in the green jerseys. They did everything, you know. And we, we had, on the staff, we had bets whether or not they do the green jerseys. I just kept thinking, there's no way Charlie would take a chance. Because if he loses, then you can never, you right. know, when's he going to do that again, gone. you know? And, and so, uh, so the, the game is just a, it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful matchup. And we were in for a dogfight. Now, they're good. They're really good. And they're ready and, and as pumped up as you can, you can get. And as the game is there, you know, it ends in the darkness, you know, at the end of the day, you know, and then, uh, which is always really cool. And the second half is, you know, dusk rolls in and all. It's just perfect. It was as packed as it could be. Our fans were all jammed down in the corner. And they were screaming like crazy, but they just couldn't match, you know, the, the Notre Dame faithful. And uh, as the game would have it, they were, they were really on it. They had a great game plan, and they were getting it done, and they were jacked up and all that. And uh, as it comes down to the end, you know, they, they go down and go ahead, and, and, and they, we're, we're trying everything we can to stop them. And, boy, they look, they look like they're on fire, you know. And, and so we have one shot to, to take this thing back down the field to win the game. And... You know, we had we have lived with a philosophy that you can't win the game in the first quarter, and you can't win it in the second quarter, and you can't win it in the third quarter. And we've always used the illustration. We've come back in so many games over the years that this was one of those times when we were going to have to do it, and it was going to be the final drive and the whole thing. I mean, it was as much drama as you can get. Uh, so as, as the last sequence begins um, in the game, uh, on on first down, um, I think we get we get sacked, and. And now it's, you know, first down we have an incomplete pass, and second down we get sacked, and now it's third and 20. And we have two timeouts left, so we call timeout, because if we don't do something well here, it doesn't matter. Why save the, the, save the timeouts? So we come to the side, and uh, Coach Kiffin's upstairs, and, and uh, Coach Sarkeesian's on the sidelines, and the three of us are on the same headsets, and we're talking about it. You know, it's clear that in that situation, we're just going to try to get some yards and make some progress. So we, we tell Matt, you know, here's the call, and, and look for Reggie, dump the ball down, see what he can get. Beautifully, I mean, it happened perfectly. Got back, you know, clean on the rush, hits Reggie. Reggie makes, a, you know, uh, uh, 11 yards, and, and uh, now it's fourth and nine. Call timeout again because there's no reason not to because we have one play left. Day's over. You know, game's over. The place is going crazy. I mean, it's going nuts. It's just as loud and as, it, it, I mean, they're going to knock us off, you know. And, and in my mind, all the way through this whole process, it was, who do you want to, if you got to give it to somebody, who do you want to give it to? I did not want to give it to Charlie. <laughs> and the whole way going through it, did in his first year, the whole thing, didn't want him to get that thing to hang on his mantelpiece, you know. 
And here it is down the fourth down. And, and so the conversation, we're all very clear about it. Everybody else, probably Dave here is going nuts. Everybody's going crazy. But we were very clear, you know, in, in our conversation. And the, the, the thought was that we, you know, we had a play that we were, we were calling. And, uh, and just as Matt, okay, here, here's what we're going with. And, uh, and Lane said, Coach Kiffin said, remind them that if they give us the blitz look, you know, go to the audible. And so Sark tells Matt, Matt goes, okay, you know, goes to the line, you know, goes, calls the play, goes to the line of scrimmage. And I remember thinking that if he has to audible, I don't know if anybody could ever hear it because it's as loud as 80,000 could get. I mean, what more could they ever want? You know, they got it all down to one play. And, and he goes to the line of scrimmage, and Lane says he's got the look, you know, which means he's got the, the audible opportunity. And so then there's like this, this pause, you know, before he's under, you know, you get under center, and he's not doing it, and then he steps back, you know. I mean, it was awesome drama for us because we knew what was going on, you know. <laughs> and, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, look at Sark, and he looks at me, and, and there he goes through the cadence, the, the audible, makes the thing, changes the entire pass protection. Everybody's route changed. Everybody had to do everything exactly right. They did, the, they, they executed the, 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 the automatic perfectly. He sets back, throws the ball to our best guy, and hits this historic, you know, 60-yard play down, you know. And that, that moment is just such an awesome moment when it happens. And I, and I can imagine everybody else going crazy, but we got to go, we ain't done yet, you know, because we want to see him score, but he got tackled. <laughs> and so, you know, and, and he gets pulled down. And so we go right to the, right to the next sequence, you know. And, and uh, um, as it turned out, Matt made a terrible decision to scramble with the clock running out. And fortunately, he gets hit, and the ball goes out of bounds, and, and the clock gets stopped. And... Uh, and the place is going crazy because they think, you know, they think that they won in the, in the whole thing right there. And uh, out of nowhere, the, 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 the angel in stripes, which they never do, this official comes running down the sideline and says, the ball went out on, on the three-yard line, and it's your ball. You know? And so I knew what happened. I and mean, all of the craziness, I knew what happened. You know? So I, everybody else was going nuts. I didn't feel like we lost or anything because it seemed like just almost instantly he, he gave me the word of what happened. So we went right into what, what our next opportunities were. And uh, um, and so you know, as 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 we finish it up, we have a chance. We have a chance to, to to run a play that we've run a thousand times, which are my baseline of thinking. If you've got the game on the line, you go to your best jump shot from the top of the key and give it your best shot at winning the game from where you're most familiar, most confident, most well prepared. We have a play call that when we're going to kill the clock, we also block it for a quarterback sneak, and we point at the quarterback to tell him when we want him to sneak it. If we give him the clock play, he throws the clock play. If we give him the clock play and point at him, he's supposed to sneak it. Okay, so that's what we did. And I said, Sark, did you get it? Did he get it? You know, because we wanted, there was a chance to win the game right there. And uh, I think I said the three yard line. We were inside the one. You got and, a good mark. Yeah. And, and, got, yeah. and, and, uh, and so I, I said, let's, right now, let's go right now. Give it to him. Make sure you got it. Did he get it? Yeah, he got it. And so I look out there, and, and Matt's starting to kind of look around. And I look over at Charlie, and Charlie's out on about the numbers. He's on the field. So I start, you know, fake, you know, doing like we're going to do the clock play. Not really making, and the, the Dan Reno thing that I talked about earlier went through my head at that time. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, I was trying to let Charlie think that we weren't going for it. I didn't know what he could, I, was, I didn't realize that there was nothing he could do about it at the time, but I was trying, Charlie, you, were, you know, you were, come on, Matt. And then Matt steps back and looks at Reggie, and he says, Reggie, I don't know if I can make it. Reggie says, go for it, go for it, you got to go, you know. And so Matt goes, okay. And so that's why, that's, <laughs> that's what happened. And that's why Reggie was tuned in to shoving him in because he told me better get in, dude, you know. And, and, so, and so he knocked him in the end zone, and, and, uh, and away we go, you know. So it was pretty exciting. One of the greatest college games ever, and that's the one time I never complained about being put in the end zone. I was yeah. sitting right there at right. that corner, yeah. and I'm looking at you, yeah. and when I saw that you didn't take off your headset and panic, I knew we had one more play. <laughs> but the, uh, the forces yeah. of the universe were with us that yeah. day.